This is a bingo card. But you knew that. You also know that when you sit down to play bingo with everyone else, everyone's chances of winning that game are totally equal. It's totally fair. Except you'd be wrong. Hey everyone, it's Brian and this is Math in Real Life. Today we're talking about the fabulous game of Bingo. Now I bet when you think about bingo, math certainly doesn't come to mind. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of strategy or any maths going along into it, but there actually is. You see, what if I told you that not every bingo card is exactly fair? In fact, once everyone is dealt their bingo cards and sits down to play, the chances of some people winning are much greater than others. How can this possibly be? Maybe this is something you've noticed if you've been in a bingo game long enough with enough people. You might have even seen the same people almost winning again and again. Which is very strange because bingo feels like an awfully equal game. So how on earth can what card you have really matter? Well, to figure that out, let's look at a very tiny bingo example. We're only going to play with three cards, and those three cards are only going to have two numbers a piece on them. So here are the three cards in my mini example. You've card A, card B, and card C. And imagine that in my bingo crate of bingo balls, there's only four numbers, one, two, three, and four. And I'm just going to randomly draw those numbers until somebody gets bingo. In this case, bingo just means getting both of your numbers drawn. So I'll give you a second, you can pause, you can think about it. Which choice, A, B, or C, would you choose if you want to have the best chance of winning this game of bingo? Or maybe you think it just doesn't even matter. Why don't you think about it for a second? So if you guess card A or card C, you would be right. In fact, if you guessed card B, B has the worst chance of winning, and A and C have equal chances to win. Let's think about why this might actually be. Well, you'll notice that the second card here, B, it shares the number two with A, and it shares the number three with C. And this sharing of numbers is actually a disadvantage. Let's say the number one is called first. A is the only card that has that number. A all of a sudden has this huge lead, this huge advantage. No one can get that one except for A. Same with C. If four is called, huge advantage for C. That's its own market share. That's its own competitive advantage. Now what if two is called? Well, that's great for B, but it's also great for A. What if three is called? That's great for B, but it's also great for C. B doesn't have this prime real estate on any number. It always shares with another card. Now, just to really mathematically prove this to you, let's look at every single possibility that the numbers one through four can be drawn in order and who wins most of the time. So here I've listed every single way that the four numbers can be drawn in order. So I'm going to read each of these, imagining left to right, that's the order that I've drawn them in. So in this first one, I would draw one first, then two, then three, then four. And for each of these, you can tell who's going to win. Remember, A wins if one and two are drawn before B or C wins. B wins if two and three are drawn before A or C wins. And C wins if three and four are drawn before A and B win. So I'm just going to list off who won for each of these possible combinations. Also notice, fun math fact, there's 24 of these. That's four factorial because that's the number of ways you can arrange four objects. So just as an example, here one gets called, then two gets called. That would mean that a would win this round. A would also win this round. In this round, one gets called, three gets called, then two gets called. That means A and B would both win at the same time. So I'm gonna give them a, a tying score. I'll call that A, B. And I'm gonna keep going like this. So after doing all of these tallies, I've put an A next to all the rounds that A won, all the Bs, 
are where B1, all the C's are where C1, and the two letters are where those two cards tied. And this is very interesting. You'll see that both A and C won eight rounds flat out, but they also had rounds where they won because they tied. So if you want to count ties as a win, which we're going to here, then A and C both won 10 times. Whereas the B card, well, the B card only won four rounds right out and won four rounds because of ties. So the B card only won eight rounds. So this was a very simple example, and you can imagine how complex a real bingo game could get with real bingo sized cards and all the different numbers and all the different combinations that could be called. In practice, it would probably be impossible to compute your chances of winning, not to mention you don't know what cards everyone else has. Even if you were given your choice of cards, even if you could pick the card you wanted, you wouldn't be able to pick the winning card. What you could do is sort of troll around the bingo hall and see if you can spot some frequent winners and maybe try to convince them to trade cards with you. So when I first learned about this, I was actually kind of mind boggled. I didn't realize that bingo had a competitive advantage. And I found that really interesting. I hope you did too. If you like this video and you wanna see more math in real life episodes, please like and share this video with a friend. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.